Hey Explorers, Brian here. Does that intro get you excited to visit the remarkable nation of South Africa? And as we go there today, we'll be checking off the following objectives. Identify South Africa's physical characteristics. Determine some of the difficulties that exist in South African townships. And recommend a course of action for addressing one of South Africa's major domestic issues. And just a reminder to print out your PDF before we go south. South Africa, a predominantly dry and temperate nation about twice the size of Texas, has been called a continent within a country. It's remarkably diverse. You can see it all. Dry plateaus, dramatic coastal mountains, and fertile farmland. It's located on the southern tip of the African continent, jutting into the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. It envelops the independent nation of Lesotho while bordering Eswatini, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Namibia. South Africa is largely covered by a plateau that descends into the Great Escarpment, a steep slope leading to the coastline. As a result, the country features stunning coastal scenery in places like Cape Town. Part of the Great Escarpment is made up of the Drakensberg Mountains, which reach to over 11,000 feet. The Orange River flows for nearly 1,400 miles through the country and is used for hydroelectric power. With a population of 59 million, South Africa has about as many people as California and Florida combined. The largest demographic is, by far, Black African. The second largest is Colored, a multiracial group with lineage from a combination of African, Asian, and European backgrounds. Now, please note an important point. In the U.S., using the term colored is offensive when classifying a person's race or ethnicity. When referring to this particular multiracial ethnic group in South Africa, it is considered a neutral and acceptable term. Despite being the minority group, for centuries, whites controlled the government, land, and industry. This dates back to the 1600s, when the Dutch came to South Africa, pushing natives inland. These colonists were known as Boers and spoke a derivation of Dutch called Afrikaans. In the 1820s, the British arrived and eventually gained control after the Boer Wars. Both European groups combined forces and drove the native peoples onto reserves or white-owned plantations. After independence in 1961, its white-led government continued practicing a policy of apartheid, or apartness, which legally segregated non-white South Africans into inferior housing, schools, and public facilities. They were settled in shanty towns called townships and were assigned identification passes that restricted their movement. Protests were met with stiff opposition. Nelson Mandela, one of the more vocal activists, was imprisoned for 27 years. These policies turned South Africa into global outcasts, and sanctions were levied by Europe and the U.S. Mass worldwide protests, concerts, and public events were held to bring awareness to apartheid. Eventually, apartheid was abolished, and Mandela was released from prison. In 1994, he became the first black president of South Africa. These years of segregation have left a lasting and obvious economic divide. When entering Cape Town, you'll pass the underdeveloped Kailicha Township. Yet once entering the city, you'll see wealthy neighborhoods filled with five-star hotels and luxury vehicles. These two existences border each other yet are figuratively worlds apart. Time magazine called South Africa the world's most unequal country. That leads us to a critical thinking question. Why might it be especially challenging to experience poverty while living near an area of great wealth? Please pause the video. You may have noticed, yes, townships still exist. Why? Well, just because apartheid ended legally does not mean that all of a sudden all South Africans have equal access to resources and employment. In fact, there is a great economic divide that tightly follows the racial lines of the country. Whites make about seven times as much money as blacks. The overall population density in South Africa is 66 people per square mile. And yet, in Soweto, the country's largest township, it's 16,000 people per square mile. Based on this picture of Soweto, what difficulties do you think its residents face? 
Explain. Please pause the video while you answer the question. You may have reasoned that Soweto and other townships have dealt with scarcity of electricity and running water for some, unpaved roads, and lack of adequate street lighting at night. If so, you'd be correct. South Africa is one of the world's most diverse nations. Remember how we told you that imperial European powers drew up borders without any regard for ethnic homelands? Well, it's obvious in South Africa. There are 11 official languages, many of them belonging to indigenous African peoples, including the Zulu and the Xhosa. This diversity led anti-apartheid leader Desmond Tutu to proclaim South Africa a rainbow nation, a place of people from many backgrounds. Since the end of apartheid, all of the major ethnic groups have held positions of power in South Africa's parliamentary democracy. Speaking of which, South Africa has three capitals, Pretoria, Cape Town, and Bloemfontein. Each serves as the headquarters for one of the branches of government. Two of these capitals are among South Africa's five cities with over one million people. Its economy is one of the largest on the continent, with a GDP per capita of over 5,000 U.S. dollars. It's buoyed by the mining of precious metals and by agriculture, and is the largest meat producer in Africa. In the southwest corner, its celebrated wine region churns out 264 million gallons of wine per year. However, the country has an unemployment rate of nearly 35%, exacerbated by a weak public education system which fails to adequately prepare students for the requirements of the working world. Government corruption and crime also are major issues facing South Africa. It has the third highest crime rate and the tenth highest murder rate in the world. Public health records reveal yet another major divide between races. 14% of the black population is afflicted by HIV-AIDS infections, compared to less than 1% of whites. So, explorers, we've discussed several major issues. If you were tasked with making improvements to the lives of South Africans, which of these issues would you address first? Explain why you think the issue you chose is the most important. Please pause the video. What's your favorite summer tradition? Going to the beach? Camping in the mountains? Well, in South Africa, one of the most popular activities is camping too. Except here, you are serenaded in your tent with the sounds of lions, hippos, and elephants to help you fall asleep. Families enjoy game drives in one of South Africa's many safari locales, including Kruger National Park. After a day of wildlife sightings, keep an eye out for one of the big five. Return to camp and enjoy a traditional braai, or barbecue. Braais can include some exotic meat, such as kudu and impala. South Africa has a rich musical tradition. A cappella music known as Isikathamia is deeply rooted in Zulu culture and characterized by layered vocal harmonies and a call and response sequence. Soccer, rugby, and cricket are the most popular sports in South Africa. And if you're into catching some waves, Jeffreys Bay on the southern coast features one of the best right-hand breaks in the world. Remember way back in our transition lesson how we referred to the continent of Africa as complicated? Well, South Africa, one of the more prominent countries, fits that description to a T. It's a beautiful, diverse country with a plethora of problems to solve. It's already overcome apartheid, but it could take years to extricate the populace from the tangled legacy it left. What's next for the country? Which of these issues will be addressed first? We'll find out. Until then, Becca Olole, keep exploring.